The next feature that I'm going to show you is the introduction of a new chart type, and that is the scatter chart. So when I go to scatter chart, actually here, let's just make a blank and then go to scatter chart. So when I go to scatter chart, you, see, you, you will see that I have a new layout menu here at the top. I have my vertical axis, my horizontal axis, my points, and my filter. You can see that for the vertical and horizontal axis, we have data locked to those axes, meaning that you will be able to turn on one data item per, per horizontal and vertical axis. We also then have the organizational units locked to the points. Um, so the points that you will see will be the organizational units that you have turned on there. And then your filter is period. So let's turn on some data. So I'm just going to click in the vertical axis, click on the data icon. And while I'm here, let me show you another really cool feature. In the data selection uh, dimension, we now have a universal search for all data items meaning that you know, gone are the days where you had to know the difference between a data element, an indicator, a event data item, a program indicator. All of those are shown here together and they're just alphabetized. Um, you can of course move in between them if you want, but now the user just really needs to know the name of the data item that they're looking for, as opposed to knowing the, whether it's an indicator or a program indicator or event data item makes it a lot more user-friendly and, and hopefully makes people a little bit easier to find the data that they're looking for and whereas they don't have to know exactly what it is defined in DHIS 2 as. So I'm gonna just search for A and C. And when I search for A and C, you can see that I'm having different data items come. Uh, you see that I have a standard data element here and I hover over it. You see that each one of these different um, data items has a different um, icon next to it indicating what kind of data item it is. So it's a data element. This one is an indicator. If I scroll down a little bit more, you can see that I'm finding some event data items. Scroll down a little bit more. Um, then I start to get to some uh, program indicators and uh, I'm sure there's some data sets in there as well. So what I'm gonna turn on right now is A and C first visits. Go ahead and hide that. And my horizontal axis, I'm going to turn on A and C second visits. I had that. My org units, I'm just going to make this cool. We're going to just go ahead and start and turn on all of the facilities within the country so that we see lots of points. Click update. And now we have a scatter plot. Each point here, each screen point is representing a health facility. And you can see that the data we're looking at is for the last 12 months. A couple of cool things that we can do here. You can see that they're all really quite clustered together at the bottom, but if I wanted to appreciate um, a little bit more clearly the distribution, I can click and drag, and you see that it makes this blue window over a certain area, and then that'll automatically zoom me in. So I can keep clicking and dragging until this, this cluster, I can start to appreciate individual health facilities. Okay, if I wanted to reset the zoom, I just come up into the top right corner and click zoom reset, and then I'm back to my original view. Now, one of the really powerful things about scatter plots is the ability to apply outlier analysis to them. And so that's what we've also enabled here, building from the experience that we've had with the WHO Data Quality app, which many of you are using and following the WHO Data Quality principles and guidelines. So if I go to my options, in the scatter plot, we have an additional tab that's unique to the scatter plot, and that's the outliers tab. Uh, if I click on the outliers tab, then I can um, choose outlier analysis and DHIS2 will automatically perform outlier analysis for you using three different methodologies. Uh, so we put in interquartile range, Z score or standard score, and modified Z score. Really, the most robust ones to use are interquartile range and modified Z score. Um, I'll go ahead and um, leave it to interquartile, or I'll just change it to modified Z score. Then you have to define a threshold factor. Uh, the threshold factor defines essentially how many standard op or how many standard deviations away from the mean, or in this case, the median you want to go. Um, we're going to provide more specific guidance about what, you, what each one of these methodologies are and its appropriate threshold factor um, in our guidance documentation. But as it stands right now, it kind of automatically fills for you. Uh, um, and I'm going to choose extreme lines. Now, extreme lines is a way for uh, DHIS2 to indicate to you which one of those outliers are 
deviating so significantly to throw off national statistics. So I'm gonna use extreme lines, turn this on, and there you go. So now DHIS2 has plotted the a mean or median uh, linear regression. And then you see, if I zoom in a little bit more here, you see that we have our threshold lines on either side of that uh, mean linear regression. And the points that are showing up in red are considered outliers. Now, where are those outliers that are really throwing off national statistics? Well, you can see that if they're above or beyond these um, extreme threshold lines, which you see here as dotted lines, then this, these values are really throwing off their national statistics. These are some serious outliers that would definitely need to be corrected or investigated. So you can see this one here, uh, these over here, these are all extreme outliers.